Over the last four months, you might have noticed my garage away from home slowly filling up in the background of videos. I've got new tools, made more workspace, organized everything, got some privacy, decorated, and overall just improved how I use the space. So today I'm gonna show you four months of slow changes in one video. When I officially moved into my workshop, all it had in it, besides a bike or two, was a workbench, a cabinet, and a shelving rack. It might have looked empty to you, but to me, it looked perfect, because I was so excited to have my own space to work on bikes and make videos. However, I quickly ran into a few problems. Firstly, the tool wall was attached to the bench, so every time I cut something in the vise, this happened. Not very pleasant, but easy to fix. So the first change I made was removing the tool wall from the bench and mounting it to an actual wall with the help of a pallet that was the perfect height and masonry drill bits that didn't even crack the tiles. Besides the fact that I'd never drilled tiles in my life before. And voila, that cured the tool wall's hypothermic shivering. The next problem I had was that I quickly ran out of workbench space because I would come in, put my helmet, jacket and backpack down and it would be full. So I decided to build another workbench. Since I already had one to copy, building the second bench didn't take long and I made it identical to the first one, but this time without a vise. I played around with a few layouts that I liked and finally settled on this one. This layout works perfectly for me because it gives me a table to stand behind when I'm talking to the camera like this and it means that I don't have to pull a bench out every time I want to get a shot like this. It also means I can work on either side of the bench and if I'm working on a bike over there it's much closer if I need something off of the bench. Plus I just really like having a little workbench office type of area. In the middle of this, my parents came to visit from the UK and were kind enough to buy me a compressor because I always loved using my dad's one so much. It's a two horsepower, 50 liter compressor bundle that came with a tire inflator, spray gun, engine cleaner thingy, a hose and a regular air gun. It refills quickly with all that horsepower and should be plenty big enough for my needs of drying bikes off, pumping tires, putting grips on, and hopefully some light painting at some point. As much as I love natural light, I prefer people not being able to see in or walk past while I'm busy filming. So my cousin cut me some vinyl to cover the windows that looks exactly like frosted glass. It's a quick and easy way to get some privacy and diffuses the light nicely for filming. Then it was time to organize things a bit, starting with my cupboard that's filled with nails, screws and all types of fasteners that is a waste of space and makes it difficult to find what you need. I found these little blue tubs that looked like they'd be perfect for storage and decided to screw strips of U-shaped aluminium to a wooden backboard that could then be mounted to the wall for the tubs to hang on. That way my screws have a home, but I can still bring the tub to where I'm working or just unhook it to be able to clean out the tub.
One of the best things for me about getting a workshop was that I finally had a place to call work and a place to come to every morning. I've always worked from home, which is incredibly convenient, but it can make it pretty difficult to get going in the morning because you're still at home and you can easily just watch YouTube instead. So now when I have a video to film, I can at least wake up and come here in the morning and feel more like a regular person coming into work. And then when I've captured everything I need after about three days and I'm sick and tired of being a regular person coming into work, I get to go back to working from home while I edit the videos. A few days after moving in, my cousin made me a big version of my logo. However, I only recently got around to hanging it up since I didn't really know where the best place was to put it. Eventually, I settled on next to the garage door, which looks absolutely awesome with the blue acrylic sprocket peeking out from behind the white wooden cover, making the best decoration. I also recently got a set of paddock stands, which everyone knows makes life a lot easier, but they are a pain in the ass to store when not in use. They're rather large and a very strange shape that doesn't fit anywhere nicely. So instead, I got two hooks and mounted them high up on the wall for the stands to hang out of the way. They also make a pretty good decoration when not in use and I got some valuable floor space back. And finally, the biggest addition, quite literally, was my DIY wooden bike lift slash bench that can accommodate any bike I need. I haven't been able to properly test it out yet, but I am excited to see what it's like working on a bike at a convenient height. But anyway, I love the functional and DIY look of my workshop a lot more than your typical tool chest brochure like you see so often on Instagram and YouTube these days. It most definitely looks cool, but I've thoroughly enjoyed turning this space into my own. And the beauty of a garage is that it's never completed. They constantly change and evolve to suit your needs. So chances are this won't be the last workshop upgrades video. But I'd love to hear your garage ideas down in the comments. So don't forget to hit the like button and I'll see you on the next ride.